Time to Outcome Advanced Method Tutorial 17 For additional insights into cohorts and their use for advanced accountable healthcare analytics, please read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare by Aran Bellin, available from Amazon in either Kindle or paperback form. In the previous tutorial, you learned how to use the simple method to do a simple study. We are now going to introduce the advanced method, first by recapitulating the original study using the advanced method and showing the differences. Let's first go to the pneumonia readmit example and open up that study. Just to remind you, we're now in Study Designer, you have the symbol for editing, the symbol for sharing, the symbol for PDF, the symbol for deletion. We're going to go to the editing symbol. Left click on the edit. The study opens up. We see pneumonia readmit. We see our main page where we have the groups, we have the methods. We go to the next tab. We just have the groups. Nothing's changing here. We're going to have the same groups as before. And we go to our method tab. We have the TTO method tab. And no other tabs here yet. We go to the target event. And we have our graph, our all events. The number of target events achieved counts the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the hospitalizations to calculate an incident density. We're now going to add another study. The study method type is going to again be time to outcome. And the method is going to be advanced TTO admit. To go to the advanced method, you'll click on the to advance button. But before we actually do this, let's take a moment to think carefully about what the simple method did. In the simple method, you had a start flag. You went forward in time to the end flag, which was the first event, the first outcome, the first hospitalization. There's implicit in the simple method that we're going forward to the first event, the most proximal event. And that's what's actually being calculated. You have no control over this. If you wanted, for example, to go to the last event, in a time period, you couldn't do that in the simple method. The advanced method will give you that time control. In the simple method, you could have gone backwards. And similarly, you would got, you'd start at the index date, the start flag, go backwards in time to the first event you encounter in the backward direction, the most proximal event in the backward direction. When you think about this first event in the backward direction, it's actually the last event in the forward calendar direction. That is, if you have an interval of 0 to 365 days going backwards, and you look at that interval from 365 days going forward, from a calendar point of view, this hospitalization would be the last one. The important point is that in the backward direction, the event is going to be the first one you encounter. Once again, the advanced method will give you more control over time. It will allow you to pick the latest instead of just the first. Let's go back to the forward direction. And now we're going to hover over the to advance button. We'll left click on that. And we see something that looks like a start flag, looks like the racetrack, but it has a different sort of flag. Notice in the previous example, you had an outcome and you had an end flag. And the end flag had the notion of time, and the outcome had the notion of event. But now in the advanced method, this flag and this outcome are combined into what you might consider to be a mega flag. This mega flag has both the notion of time and the notion of the outcome event, and it gives you incredible control. 
This mega flag is called an analysis definition. An analysis definition has within it both the notion of time, has a notion of event. Its notion of time can be before or after, earliest or latest, which is equivalent to first or last in the direction of the flow of the query. It has within it the notion of the event itself. We haven't yet built any analysis definitions, so we need to build an analysis definition. Remember, we want to repeat the simple analysis using the advanced method. We don't have an analysis definition. We notice a three-dotted button. The three-dotted button is your friend. It always helps you. So you left-click on the three-dotted button, and it opens up its own canvas, an analysis definition canvas, very similar to the event canvas that you'd had before. We're going to name this admit first. We hover on the index line. We right click and we add a condition that is within. This condition opens up a red line that has to be described in your GUI editor below. Since we want the first one, or the most proximal one in the forward direction, earliest, new event definition as before, we're going to create a new event definition. It's going to be called admit. We don't have any further requirements because it's all admissions, update and close. And we notice that the event has been populated. We want the event to be within 0 to 365 days. Remember in the simple method, we had required that the event happen within 0 to 365 days. And we want it to have, happen after the cohort collection date. So the AD is saying, I want to find the first admission 0 to 365 days after the cohort collection day. Update and close. My AD line is now populated. In my title for my AD, I am writing admit first after. So I remember that the AD has a notion of admission, has a notion of first, has a notion of after, and it also has a notion of 0 to 365 days. So you can see the AD captures a lot of information. The advantage is once I build it, I can reuse this AD very quickly. First. Now I have another task. That task is to change the index line. So instead of saying all, it says first, and it also points to the first line here. In a TTO, a time to outcome, it's a time to outcome to the first event. So you have to change this notion of all to first. Let's edit this index line. Instead of all, it becomes, becomes earliest. Instead of any, we point to the first line. And this will now change from all to earliest and point to the first line. Update and close. So now I have my AD, which is admit first 0 to 365 days, admit first 0 to 365 days after the cohort collection date. It's the earliest admit first. And now I'm going to save it. Look at the management pane. Notice it says here new analysis. I save it. And the analysis definition has been created. Once again, to remember the convention, you always have to save in Study Designer. You have to save in the Analysis Canvas. It's only in the Event Canvas that you don't save.
we will now save and exit. And we will now exit the management pane. This brings us back to Study Designer, brings us back to the advanced mode, because as you see, you have this mega flag, which is the analysis definition. We now have to choose from the analysis definitions that are available to us. We built only one, so we have that one here. And now we're ready to go. Method name, advanced ETO and met. Method description, we're going to look at estimations points, 30, 60, 90, 180, 365. And we're going to name this hospitalization rate. Now we're ready to run. We have our demographics. We have our target event. Notice <clears throat> this is the advanced method. P value 0.567. Look at the graph. I have it on target event. My original simple method, I'm also opening to target event, 0.567, and I'm flipping between the two images, and you can see that the graph is exactly the same. Look at the table here. The table is exactly the same. So my advanced method obtained the exact same result in terms of time to outcome, time to first outcome, which is the graph and the table below. In both the simple mode and the advanced mode, we have a patient list. We have a demographic. And the demographic, the target event, and the patient list are all identical. The only difference in the TTO, simple and advanced, is on the all events tab. Take a look at that for a moment. You notice in the simple method, there are 793 admissions for males when you count the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all of them. That's what it's calculating. And it's calculating 242,697 days at risk. In the advanced method, you have only 328 admissions. Notice the difference. We'll flip back and forth. 793, 328. We look at person days. Person days is 242,697. Keep your eye focused on that number. I'm going to flip the advanced. It's the same. Person days don't change, but the numbers who achieve the target do. Why is that? Well, in TTO admit simple method, all the hospitalizations downstream are counted. You don't have the fine control of being able to tell it, include these, don't include that. In the advanced method, because your analysis definition has restricted the system to see only the first one, that's the only thing you can see in the All Events tab. So the important point here is that if you are looking to see what the incident density is for all the events, you have to use a TTO admit in the simple mode. You have to use the simple mode. The All Events tab is misleading in the advanced mode. So to recapitulate, the advanced modes give you complete control of the things you are counting and whether it's before or after, but it comes at a cost. So far we've only shown you how to recapitulate the simple mode, but we haven't motivated why you want to be able to use the advanced mode. In the next tutorial, we'll actually show you a situation where you cannot do the study in the simple mode, but you need the advanced mode in order to do the study.